Welcome to the Pope on Film. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is... Um, Reverend Steve of the Church of Ed Wood, and my living room, and various other places. <laughs> so, let me tell you about getting old. One of the things okay. about getting old... Oh, I'm buckling up here. I'm, uh, what? I'm buckling up. Yeah. Technology is getting away from me no matter what I do. Now, how how do you say that? I mean, why do you say that? Not how do you say that. I know how you say that. In this particular oh. case, I say this because I'm sitting here just kind of surfing the web, looking at Facebook and stuff like that, and I'm like, oh, I think it's I think it's 3.30 Reverend Steve's time. Didn't we, oh, where are we going to do the show there? And I go to Facebook and I check it and I double check it. And yeah, that's what we agreed on. And then I sit here for like the next fucking ten minutes trying to figure out how to text you. Nice. <laughs> just just very nice. The phone being like, son of a bitch. Because I've never texted anybody who was not already in my contacts. <laughs> yeah. Okay, very nice. I'm, I've programmed an assembler language, okay? I know C. I know <laughs> C++. I could do HTML. A million visual basic, a million programming languages, along with the visual graphics I do. I can't fucking figure out how to text somebody anymore. That's getting old. <laughs> Occasionally I'll press a button two or three times while I'm texting someone because I'm used to those phones where, because I, apparently I'm used to texting with those phones where they're just phone numbers. And to get to, like, F, you have to press the button two or three times to get yeah. to the F. And every yeah. once in a while, I'll, I'll I'll end up pressing, like, the, the, like, letter C key, like, three times until I realize, oh, it's just the letter C. I'm confused, <laughs> apparently, by this, which is weird. I tell people that I don't have a smartphone. I have a rather clever phone. A <laughs> rather clever phone. It's not a smartphone. Maybe it's a smart ass phone. Yes. But it's not a smartphone. Also, I'm locked in this horrible uh, uh, data plan with my in laws, like it's 2001. We have a certain amount of gigs that we have to that we have to stick to every month. It, it, it's it's I, my phone is in the Stone Ages essentially. Yeah. I don't know. See, I'm just cheap. I mean, we we actually just ditched our data plan because, like, we never used it because it seems like if we touched it or looked at it funny, we have we would have overages. Yeah. So, you know, I'll I'll, I'll go home. I have a computer there. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I have a I have a hey I have a question for you. Sure. So so where are you? doing this podcast from you're in colorado i am in colorado yes colorado how's the weather like over there right now uh right now not bad at all uh last week we had a hell of a fucking cold snap um yeah where we were down down like negative five negative ten stuff like wow that. Uh, we haven't had, and like right now it's like 56, because that's Colorado. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. uh, we haven't had, we've had some snow, we haven't had like a dumping on like you got. Yeah. You know, but Colorado weather is really fucked up. When, um, my girlfriend Jeannie was coming down from Seattle to, to move in, um, you know, you keep tabs on a person the whole way. You know, you text back and forth, stuff like that. As she was coming through Denver, um, it was like it, it was like 85. This was May. It was like 85 degrees, and she was just dying in the car. Next day, got like a foot of snow. Yeah, yeah. The next day, it sounds. This is it May. sounds. <laughs> It sounds like your weather is as bipolar as the weather is here in Oklahoma. Yeah. 
apparently we get apparently Oklahoma, and I think this is because of fracking, which I don't fully understand. To me, it just sounds like a fetish I haven't yet learned about. But apparently, Maybe. fracking has turned Oklahoma into the earthquake capital of America. Oh, um, there's more earthquakes now in Oklahoma than there are in California. If you can believe that. Uh, I hadn't heard that. I I I watched a couple of documentaries on fracking, and I don't know why we're doing it. But, yeah, there's uh, a ton. Yeah, there's yeah. a ton of earthquakes now all the time around Oklahoma City and uh, kind of northern Oklahoma and that sort of uh, thing. Really bizarre. A, well, a couple of days ago here, we got a bunch of snow. And the roads were just complete ice, and I was driving about 20 miles per hour on my way back home yeah. from work, and there was just pretty much a wreck every every five minutes. It was, yeah. The the whole freeway was just littered with accidents. It was pretty messed up. But then today, it's just a beautiful spring day, and it's like a what 64 degrees right now, and Sunny yeah. and just a perfect day. Really bizarre. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's that's Colorado weather. It's a very strange state. Colorado yeah. is just bizarre because um, it's really conservative. You know, and we have a lot of a lot of religious groups here, like focus on the family and shit like that. You know, not jobs that make the news. You know. <laughs> um, yeah. And then there are pockets of hippies scattered around, you know, legalized marijuana. How is that? It's awesome! <laughs> really? I just, I, I, I just can't imagine that. It's, it's I'm, weird. See, see, I, I still do the medical marijuana, even though recreational has been legalized. You know, because yeah. uh, I I feel, first off, I need it for medical purposes, you know, and I support the idea, you know, and it's yeah. cheaper. <laughs> yeah. It's cheaper because you're getting medicine, you know. You know, it's a lot more expensive if you're buying recreational marijuana. Um, but it's fucking weird to, like, go into a store, you know, yeah. Kind of a strange store, definitely a head shop kind of a store, okay? And yeah. just buy marijuana and get it in a, you know, my place puts it in like little prescription bottles, but then it goes into yeah. a bag, just like you see a shop in anywhere, and I'll just walk out with, with your bag of marijuana, get in your car, and leave. <laughs> it's a weird feeling, you know? Yeah. It's not, it's, uh, again, I'm getting old, man. It's not like that where you used to meet some guy you barely fucking know in yeah. one room in a house that was shared by just a bunch of fucking drug addicts. <laughs> yeah. I I had a, a girlfriend that I lived with for a while, and she just, she had to, she, it was just a habit for her like two or three times a day, like like eating food. She just had to constantly smoke up. And I, I remember one Thanksgiving we were going to my parents' place, but first we have to stop by this one place. And it was yeah. this one sketchy house. And apparently, even though my parents are waiting for us to start dinner, not only do we have to go to this strange house, but we have to sit and watch them play video games for 45 minutes. Oh, yeah, Until yeah. he's ready to start the transaction. <laughs> and it's in, a, in, like, this neighborhood that I've never been to before. Yeah. I, I don't get – it doesn't seem to have an address. And there's, like, eight other people in the house, and I think they all live there. And it's like, yeah, that's – okay. All right, this is what I'm used to. Like, I, I – when I lived in California, and I lived there for like a decade, you, yeah. I could have gotten medical marijuana. It was an option, and everybody knew about the, like, one place you go to, and you can get your card, and then you go to the one store that may or may not be shut down a, a week later. But it, the 
the the only problem that I have with marijuana and medical marijuana, and maybe you can help me with this, um, I'm a fucking wuss with everything. You're what? like, well, well, you know, like non drowsy Claritin. Yeah, that will knock me the fuck out. Well, like non drowsy Claritin to me is like the strongest vodka in the world. So when yeah. it came to me and pot, it was always like, okay, let me take one tiny little puff. Okay, let me take one tiny little puff. Okay, someone drive me home because I can't see anymore. <laughs> yeah, I, I've always been like that. It, 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 like it, with alcohol, I try and stick to beer because if it comes to something okay. strong, just I'm I'm done and it's you know in seconds I'm on the floor. So I've always wondered like, okay, well when it comes to to marijuana. Back in the day, I used to remember that you would get whatever you can get, and it was probably shit. But nowadays, aren't there different types of marijuana, different kinds, different strengths yes. of this sort of a thing? Uh, but I've also heard um, somebody th – there was a report someplace where all the strains are pretty much the fucking same anyway. So uh, I, I know some people who swear by that. I don't really pay much attention to it. Yeah. I'm kind of like, I just figure, well, like, if I, if I, who has not a lot of experience, it, can I go into one of these stores and just say, hey, do you have anything weak? Do you have the, like, a non- oh, Yeah, they're really, they're wrong. really, they're really helpful and have a lot of advice and, you know, they they really want to educate about marijuana in these shops, you know. So fuck yeah, you can say yeah, give me a pussy dose, you know, and yeah. they'll they'll explain all about it and you know some you know. I like to get something strong, but like I very rarely smoke. You know, yeah. I got I got a little high before doing the podcast because I, I like to be a little high when I talk to people. Uh, yeah, I'm drinking right now. Yeah. Um, of course, I, I have to get high to do Bob's Dirty Shorts. <laughs> yeah, you know? no, I would imagine so. But other than that, um, like a joint between me and my girlfriend will last like three days. Yeah. You know, something like that. So I don't really smoke very much. Yeah. <clears throat> But it, 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 for me, I feel like it does tons and tons to help, you know, control the depression and control my anxieties yeah. and things like that. You know, what kind of keeps me away is I feel like if I get high, um, I'm not going to get anything done. And that's, like, never true. I always get, like, a, a lot more done than I would if I didn't. But it also works Kind of like what you were saying, it works very, very opposite on me, you know, yeah. than a lot of other people where, like, uh, like if I come home from work and I don't smoke, I got to take a nap. You know, yeah. I just can't, you know, and if I do smoke, it perks me up, you know. They're like, eh, I don't, yeah, I don't have to take a nap. I do this and I do that the other thing. But to everybody else I know is sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't do that for me at all. In fact, I really can't smoke too close to bedtime or I won't fall asleep. That's interesting. Yeah. Adventures in drugs, ladies and gentlemen. Adventures in <laughs> drugs. <laughs> I just don't have, I don't have really... Are the children tuning in? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have that much, ex I don't have that much experience yeah. with marijuana and this and that. The other day, I, a couple of weeks ago, I had a conversation with my youngest daughter and, and they were mentioning something about marijuana on TV and she was just like marijuana is a drug and all drugs are bad and you know I, I had to be the, the person to kind of be like oh well you know some drugs are bad but marijuana helps people and it can be a medicine to really help people out and also 
alcohol is horrible, but that's legal, and you have to realize that things aren't in black and white. And so, yeah, it, I don't have too much experience with marijuana. And also, I live in Oklahoma. I live in the Midwest. And uh, tattoos were illegal in this state until sometime around 2006. I mean, the, like, you could not open, you could not legally open, like, a tattoo parlor in this state until sometime around 2006. Oh, my God. That's amazing to me. Uh-huh. And that's just, it absolutely fascinates me. The idea uh-huh. that that the rest of the world is just like, let's give... Uh, equal rights to everyone and let's make marijuana legal and they're just like I imagine like uh, oil baron type people fat guys with jowls smoking cigars going what should we do about tattoos and loud music and stuff like that <laughs> yeah. like a yeah. like a, a rich person in an editorial cartoon Big huge belly and a top yeah. hat, maybe a monocle. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> really weird. Really weird stuff. What episode podcast is this? Is this nine? Uh this is either eight or nine. Let me check real quick. I have a horrible memory. I this also have a so- horrible memory. <laughs> this is episode eight. Episode eight. Okay. Cool. Episode eight. Right before I did this podcast, my youngest daughter Isabella, she said, "Daddy, why are you doing this podcast for?" <laughs> and I'm like, it's "Because you know, it's fun and you get to talk about movies and people listen to it, and of course, my legion of fans." Yeah. All over the world. Uh, by the way, the the Glen of the Bride, Bride of Glen, the, the guy, the one on Twitter yes. that I gave a shout out to last week, and yes. I'm shouting out again. Uh, becoming real good friends of the show is sending us some of the some of the discs he's made. Oh, really? Some of his DVDs, yeah. So cool. We're gonna have we're gonna have prizes. <laughs> awesome. We can hold contests have... and we can give a couple of ways prizes. Yeah, I'll send you one. I'll keep one. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Prizes. Pretty cool. Yeah. Sweet. We'll have to come up with contests. Yeah, we'll have to think of something. Then we'll find out if anybody's listening good. or not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It'll have to be something really good. Yeah. We'll come up with something. So what yeah. is this week's movie? This week's movie is the 2007 comedy Schindler's List. That it's just was... a nonstop thrill ride of laughs. Yeah. Remember remember that scene when all the Nazis were sitting around the campfire and they were eating guns? And they <laughs> that was hilarious. What a, yeah. what a hilarious scene. Oh, and the scene where the... People are hiding in the toilet. Oh, man. Yeah. Woo! I was just except, nonstop laughing. Except they kept, kept cutting to that one little depressing Jewish girl in her attic. I forget her name. Oh, yeah. I, I thought there were a lot of a lot of Jewish people in that movie. Very weird. Yeah. What's, what's with all these Jewish people yeah. in a Holocaust? movie. You know what? One day I hope to see that Jerry Lewis film. Do you know what Jerry Lewis film I'm talking about? Something Clowns. Tears of a Clown. Something that like that. The was, I, I thought Jerry it was something Lewis along the I thought it was something along the lines of The Day the Clown Cried or The Day the yes. Clown Died or something like that. His Holocaust comedy that may never see the light of day. Yeah. Harry Shearer from um, SNL and from, what, The Simpsons and Final Tap, he was actually one of the few people, apparently he met Jerry Lewis, and Jerry Lewis said, hey, do you want to see this movie? And 
actually got to sit down and watch the movie. And there's oh, yeah. a document, yeah, yeah, and there's a documentary about the movie that features some scenes from it. But one day I hope to see that movie. One day I hope it reaches the light of day. He'll probably have to die first. Yeah. That's yeah. That's that's one of those movies because it's a lost movie. We know it's out there someplace, you know. And as it's as, not as a lost movie, movie. Oh, no. there's just one copy, and he has it. Yeah. He won't let anyone see it. Just like um, oh hell, what is it? London at Midnight. One of the few Lon Chaney speaking movies. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I I yeah. And when I was just, little. When I was little, one of my first, uh, one of the first things that tuned me into horror movies and the classics and all of that were these specific library books. There were a specific yeah. type of library books, and they had orange covers, and they were for little kids. And I forget the name of them, but they were in all in my library at school. And then when I grew up, I learned that they were in you know a lot of people's library at school, most people's library at school. And they would have a book that was just on Dracula and just on Frankenstein and just on the Wolfman and one on Mad Scientist and there was one on Godzilla. And it was an '80s sort of a thing, right? And they had a page of Lon Chaney's super creepy face and makeup from from that movie like a still from the lost film and that would yeah. give me nightmares just the creepy yeah. face and the, the sunken eyes and just this massive row of teeth I remember that just freaking me out when I was a kid <laughs> so I remember That's those amazing. books just yeah I remember those books just caused me to want to Hold, hold, hold on a second. What are you showing me, Bella? Uh, that's a plane. You stopped my podcast so you could point out a plane to me. Did you think it was a UFO? Is that what you thought it was, Bella? You thought it was a UFO? That would have been awesome for my podcast, but unfortunately it's a plane. Okay? Hold on. I want you to apologize for the podcast. Okay? I'm sorry. That's better. All right, then. Hi. I'm back. And she said she saw what looked like an eagle's eye floating in the sky. Yeah. It was a plane. It's it's amazing what can creep you out as a kid, going back to what you were saying. When I was a kid, and I forget how old I was, I, I was, you know, maybe even like 11 or 12 or something like that. I remember the, the commercial for the movie, It's Alive. Ah, uh, uh, the shit out of me. Yeah. That and the commercial for Suspiria. Oh, yeah, with, uh, what's her name, Jennifer Connelly? Isn't she in that? No, Suspiria no, no, I'm, is, um, Jessica Harper. No, I'm thinking, yeah, no, I'm thinking of another, I'm thinking of another movie. Uh, Jennifer Connelly was Phenomenon, I think. Yeah, that's and it. Donald Pleasant, and she could, like, talk the bugs or some shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Those two ones, the 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 commercials just creeped me out. And then I always have to see it. I love it's alive. Have you ever seen that? The one movie? It's alive. I think I have. The killer babies. Yes, I was gonna say. I was gonna say. I remember. I think I have the movie poster on my screensaver. Because my screensaver, uh, my screensaver is about five thousand photographs that just plays in a loop, and it's pictures of the kids and also just the 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 coolest movie posters I can find. And I'm pretty yeah. sure that it, it's like a baby carriage or something. Yeah, with a with a strange clawed kind of like potato hand coming out of it. Yeah. 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 When I was a kid, there was a movie preview that haunted me, which is weird because it was like an 80s comedy. I think it was called Hunk or something like that, but it was this nerdy, skinny, like 98-pound weakling guy who sells his soul to the devil in exchange for having a hot body. 
and suddenly all of these it's like it's a really stupid movie to be scared of, but suddenly all these women want him and are having sex with him, but he gets really sad and depressed, and I just remember him like begging fate and just asking like, "What happened to my old body?" And there's something about like how sad he was asking for the for where his old body was that just depressed the shit out of me. And I could just, just something about that just haunted me when I was a kid, like seven or eight, a really stupid 80s comedy that nobody remembers. Yeah. There's just something about that. It's not ringing a bell. Well, no, I don't That's one of those movies that you'd see on, like, 1989 on the USA Network at, like, two in the morning. I I I I liked uh watching up all night. Yeah. I, I specifically wasn't re- in the USA. I specifically remember the one thing that I loved the most on USA up all night was uh after was it Gilbert Godfrey hosted that for a while. Was that before or after the woman hosted? I Rhonda Shear. Yeah, I mean, he did a an all night psycho marathon of like psychos two, three, and four. But through the whole movie, he's looking through his house to find a copy of the original Psycho, which is actually good as opposed to the crap he's forcing people to watch. <laughs> and he just welcome back to the psycho marathon. Now I'm looking through my closet. <laughs> I've got a lot of boxes in here. I'm sure it's here somewhere. While I look for the good psycho, you keep watching Psycho 3. And my sincerest apologies. I, I just remember. vividly remember that because that was, those, like, all of the other ones were just absolutely horrible. When it was Rhonda Shear, I don't really remember her playing very many movies. No. It was just like a, a bunch of fucked up stuff, you know, with like Bob the Subgenius and all that. And I remember there was this one that had a, like they just had this clip of like this Russian music, music band. Yeah. And they were like out on the tundra and they were very burly men, <laughs> you know, with big porn stash mustaches in the snow with their shirts off going, life, life is life. And that was like all the clips that they had, and they just kept popping it in at all these weird places. <laughs> That's one of the reasons why I always liked Cinema Insomnia with Mr. Lobo. I always liked that show, because he would show some horrible movies, but then they'd have commercials for old black and white commercials. and yeah. Movie previews and bizarre musical numbers and stuff like that. I used to love those. My kids used to be obsessed with that. Back when I still had some of the DVDs. I don't have any of those anymore. But, oh, I, man, my kids used to love that. Yeah, I have I have two of them. The one I don't have is the one I have a, I have a bumper on because I did a bit of animation for them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was in two episodes. Yeah. I, I was in the Buck of the Blood episode, and I was in a, a Star Crash, which is a horrible, horrible movie. Oh, but so worth it. I could sit through that movie a million times, just looking at Carolyn, and I'm like, oh, I am so in love but with my, it. My kids were absolutely obsessed with the one Godzilla movie, the, the Gigantus, the Fire Monster which yeah. was a horrible American version. And the thing that I love about that episode is that when it comes to the big fight at the end of the movie, the fight itself isn't that good. So he spliced in scenes from uh, a Godzilla video game. <laughs> like, oh, they're about to fight. And then suddenly you just see those two monsters, but fighting in a GameCube game, except he has it in black and white. And it's like, oh, well, that's infinitely better than the actual stupid movie. In that in that particular Godzilla movie, for some strange reason, they just thought, well, let's just speed up the action during the fight sequences. Like, you imagine yeah. if two giant, like, 
200 feet tall monsters are going to fight, that they're going to fight pretty slow. But apparently the American studio just said, no, let's just speed this up like 10 times. <laughs> it would normally be. And, and it turns into like a weird, like monster Benny Hill sort of a thing. Yeah. Really bizarre. Yeah. Uh, we got to get you a Roku one day so you can pick up zombie TV. Yeah. Yeah. No, one of these days. I like to I like to check that out because he he's got his own show, but he, he puts up a lot of other interesting stuff too. Mm-hmm. He has children shouldn't play with dead things. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite mm-hmm. zombie movies. Yeah, I keep seeing it. One of these days, I'm gonna get it. Yeah. So this week's movie is 2007's comedy Hot Rod, starring Andy Sandberg. What did you think about this film? Awesome. awesome. I'm in love with this movie. And, and the, the first thought that kind of hit me is like, you know what? This is Napoleon Dynamite, but good. I hated that movie. <laughs> yeah. It was like the yeah. same kind of, it was like the same kind of jerky adolescent movie that Napoleon Dynamite was, but fucking funny as hell. You know, yeah. and offbeat and, and great and just so many things that I've never heard in a movie before that I responded to. You know, yeah. Um, maybe we should we should synopsize it first because there's not it, really a lot to synopsize. The movie was written by a woman named Pam Brady, and I know of her because she started writing for South Park, and she helped write the movie South Park, and then she wrote Team America: World Police. And she also uh-huh. wrote the movie. She also wrote the movie Hamlet too, which I'm obsessed with. I love that movie. I think I love that movie primarily because of how much it hates Tucson, Arizona, and I also hate Tucson, Arizona. So I think that's one of the reasons why I love that movie so much. But she originally wrote the movie Hot Rod for Will Ferrell, and it was going to be a Will Ferrell movie, and he turned it down. And oh, it's thank it, God, man. Yeah, it stayed on the shelf for a really long time, and then eventually it was given to Andy uh, uh, Sandberg and his uh, his two flunkies, the the Lonely Island people from SNL. Yeah, I haven't uh, watched uh, SNL in a hundred years. Well, um, it, SNL I wanted know, to be hip, so I they know went the hair from Superbad, yeah. you know, and a couple yeah. of other faces. But you know, yeah, um, they, like a like a, a a number of years ago, SNL wanted to be like about a, ten years ago. SNL wanted to be cool and hip, so they went on to the internet possibly for the first time, and they found a group of three guys, three nerdy guys who would post videos on the internet, and they called themselves the Lonely Island, and they would post songs and and do movies and stuff like that. And so they hired all three of them, and they they got on SNL, and the first skit they did was about guys eating lettuce, heads of lettuce. But the second skit they did was a song called uh, Lazy Sunday, which exploded everywhere. Do they do that song, um, I Fucked Your Mother? Yeah. Okay. Mother Lover. Mother and they Lover. do uh, my favorite they, song they, of theirs. They're like Pandora Q. <laughs> Yeah. My favorite song of theirs is um, Punch You in the Jeans. It's a song about how much they hate jeans. My kids are, my kids know how much I love that. Well, because Andy Sandberg, he's, he's the face of Lonely Island, and then he's got, like, two friends. So the second guy from Lonely Island plays his brother in the movie, Hot Rod. Uh-huh. And then the third guy from Lonely Island directed all of this. And it's a very Lonely Island sort of a movie. They gave the script for Hot Rod, the Will Ferrell script, to the Lonely Island guys, and they said, well, we'll do this, but we'll only do it if we get to rewrite the script. 
So they yeah. completely rewrote the script. And one of the Andy Sandberg said in an interview that his inspiration when he was rewriting the script was the movie Wet Hot American Summer, which uh-huh. I am in love with. You know, and it it kind of shows from the box art. Yeah. You yeah. know? When, well, I kind of, whatever the hell you are <clears throat> now. It's still box art. I'm old. Leave me alone. Um, yeah. But, but the plot itself was so beautifully simple, you know, and it's exactly the kind of sentimental plot that you would see in a lot of movies that just seem to be lampooning, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But just so beautiful. So uh, we we have robbed the stunt man. Yeah. Young guy, like. Is he in school? Is he out of school? He's he's like really young, or at least he comes off that way. Like twenty five, maybe ish. I don't know. It's a bit up in the air as to how old he is in this. Yes, and he wants to. He is well. He is a stunt man on his moped um, <laughs> to follow in his dead father's footsteps, who was also a stunt man. Um, meanwhile, he is fighting with his stepfather to win his stepfather's respect. I keep telling... Go ahead. I I keep telling my oldest daughter, because I I keep forgetting that I'm a stepdad, because my oldest daughter, I've I've been with her since shortly after her first birthday. So I changed diapers. I, I held her. Is yeah. She's uh, about to be 13, but I've been with her for so long, and I've been her father for so long that I forget that I'm that she's not my blood. So yeah. whenever this movie comes on, I keep telling her that this is what she's just going to have to do now if she wants me to continue loving her, is just fight. Yeah. If she she's been in a chemical fire. Yeah. Yeah. And the dad is Sorry, played I, by Ian McShane. Sorry? And the dad is played by Ian McShane, who, yeah, who played yeah. a crazy badass on Deadwood, which I never saw. <laughs> so so Rod fights him, and then he, later in the movie, develops heart problems to stepfather. So Rod is now going to become a famous stuntman, pull off this great stunt, so that he could raise the money to st- save his stepfather to then kick him, kick the living shit out of him to gain his respect. <laughs> yes. That's basically the plot of this movie. <laughs> and you're off and running. Tissy Spacek is in this as the mother. The, the, the cast in this is amazing. Oh... Yeah. Uh, Will Arnett is in this. And you know what? I have a correction. I have a correction to do. Uh, Last week, I was talking about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the reboot. And I mentioned that there were three people in the movie from Saturday Night Live. That is a mistake. For the longest time, I have thought that Will Arnett was from Saturday Night Live. Or at least I apparently assumed that he was on account of how hilarious he is. And he was also married to Amy Poehler for a while. But no, he's never been on SNL. <laughs> he is hysterical. I loved him in the rest of the development and a couple of other things I've seen him. Oh, Although, yeah. Whenever, you see, whenever I see uh, an actor or an actress and they are always basically kind of playing the same character, which Will yeah. Arnett certainly does, I just yes. kind of assume, you know what, that's just probably them. You know, they're not yes. they're not really acting anymore. So Will yeah. Arnett was as funny as he is, I think he's probably a douchebag. Yeah, <laughs> you know? he might be. I, I, I have a suspicion. No no facts, nothing like that. <clears throat> but, you know, maybe. On the DVD, they have like a featurette, like a making of the film. And one of yeah. the things that I love about the featurette is that um, the love interest in the movie is played by Isla Fisher, I think is how you pronounce her name. Anyway, she's British. She is and fucking she, adorable. 
She is. She's she's like a one in a long line of of a British people forced to do an American accent. So they're interviewing the cast, and everybody's talking, and she's talking in her original British voice. And so Bill Hader, whom I love, when he's interviewed, he he adopts a British accent for all of his interviews, <laughs> and he adopts this even though he's supposed to be himself. It, yeah. it reminded me of Peter Sellers a little bit. Like, you never <laughs> fully knew Peter Sellers, because Peter Sellers was probably just constantly being someone else. So when Bill Hader is being Bill Hader in this uh, making of documentary, he adopts a Pompey British accent. Yeah. And he's talking about, well, I read the script, and it was just droll. <laughs> But I thought, well, you know, I'll do it as a favor. And I love him. And I never knew, I've, I've never really known, I've never really seen anything that Danny McBride was in. Like, I've never seen his show Eastbound and Down, Eastbound and Down, the show he has on, I think, uh, HBO or Showtime or something. Of, is he the kind of stocky guy? Yeah. Okay. So the one that's in, like, a lot of Judd Apatow movies. Yeah. That's where I recognize him for for quite a bit, like Pineapple Express and stuff like that. The only um, other movie the only other movie I've seen him in is This Is The End, and in that movie he's playing himself, so I feel like I haven't seen him in anything. <laughs> yeah. You know? Um, Bill Hader, I, I kind of have a love-hate relationship with. Um, Why well, do you have a hate relationship with him? I, I I I really I first found him and like really kind of fell in love with him in Superbad. Yeah. Have you seen Superbad? Okay. Yeah, he was uh, one of the cops, right? He was one of the cops. Yeah. And but then I hate him at the same time because just before I had seen Superbad, um, I had a friend who wanted me to read his script. Okay. And yeah. he's he's never going to be a filmmaker. He, he's 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 <laughs> a dude who's just a lot of talk, you know. Um, but he wants to he wants me to read the script, and I start reading the script, and blood pours out of my eyes. This yeah. script is fucking god awful. <laughs> you know, like like. <sighs> Like, he would write witch, you know, and that would be the extent of the character development. Well, that's a, that's a witch, you know? Nice. And he had he had two, and this was a kind of a horror thing, and he had, like, two cops show up at the end who were, you know, just officers, you know? <clears throat> yeah. And so so stereotypical, and, and they use ex machina and everything else where – you know, at the end of this harm where we just a couple of cops show up to clean everything up, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. And I felt bad for him, and I was like, I am, I'm, uh, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite the script for you, <laughs> okay? So I sit down and I rewrite the script, and, like, now it's almost a challenge. Just the first time I've ever, the first and only time I've ever worked off of somebody else's work before like that. You know, most yeah. of everything I write is original. Um, but like now it's a challenge to take everything that he did, make it good and twist it. Okay. So I wanted, of course, I wanted to introduce the cops earlier in the script. You know, I don't want them just popping up at the end. So, um, I was kind of trying to think of how I can get cops with characters, you know, that were actual characters and, you know, three dimensional <clears throat> shit. And these two cops, Ash and Byrne, they uh, were totally token up in their car, in their in their cruiser, you know, like Cheech and Chong style, you know, yeah. where the whole inside of the cop car was just full of fucking smoke. And then then they ran out, and there was a party going on with the woods in the woods because it's a teen horror movie, you know, so there's got to be a party going on someplace. 
And they've been listening to the music the whole time. They know the party's going on, but then that's the thing to they'll go into the woods and shake some of the kids from the dope. You know? So these were mm-hmm. my cops. And I finish that script, I give it to him, he loves it, it's never going to get made. Um, and then I see super fuck, I see fucking super bad. And I'm like, I'm ah. cops. <laughs> Son yeah. of a bitch. <laughs> My brother, my older brother, feels the same way about the insane clown posse. Because my brother, my brother, an amazing musician, he's just a a genius on the guitar. He never had one lesson. Yeah, yeah, those people. (laughs) No, my brother, my brother's amazing on the guitar. He can listen to one commercial one time, and then he pulls out his guitar and he can perfectly play whatever song was on that commercial. He has a really good eye for repeating music that he's heard and he's written some wonderful original songs, but when we were growing up, he always had a different gimmick for a band. Yeah. And he would come up with these different gimmicks. And, oh, we're going to be a punk band. We're going to be called the Mimes. And whenever it comes time to to, we're going to play the instruments, but when it comes time to sing, we're just going to mouth it. <laughs> and I say, oh, well, that's a that's a wonderful idea. I would pay to see the mimes. It would be awesome. And then his uh, other idea was uh, the Lazy Boys. And uh, it, it's, a, it's like a heavy metal band, but everybody is sitting down in like a Lazy Boy recliner. <laughs> like the lead singer just has this really nice couch that he can just lay down on. And he's, it's a really hardcore band, but they're all relaxing. They're like big, huge, comfy chairs. It's like, okay, well, that's a wonderful idea. And then his idea was for a, like a hardcore death metal group, but dressed as circus clowns. But we'd be badass circus clowns. We're just going to be the clowns. And clowns are going to be badass. We're going to be badass clowns. And then one day he was just he was just driving down the street and he saw someone with an insane clown posse shirt and just God damn it, someone stole my idea. That was my idea. I don't know who these guys are, but I'll hate them for life. <laughs> so yeah, my brother has a just a wants to oh, kill man. the insane clown posse. Oh, I, I I I would aid him in that dream. They're really obnoxious. <laughs> Unfortunately, I have a begrudging respect for the Insane Clown Posse. I read a wonderful book. Like, I read a wonderful book, and it's called uh, You Don't Know Me, But You Hate Me. And it's okay. this one uh, m- uh, music critic who decides to spend an entire year following Fish and Insane Clown Posse. And he just devotes his That's entire life. Double bill. <laughs> I well, yeah. I, he just he picks the two groups in America that he feels are the most maligned, and he really just falls in love with both groups. He falls in love with Fish and with the group of people who follow them, but he also feels a like like a big affinity for the the Juggalos, and he follows them, and he goes to like two of their gatherings and does drugs with the fans and just it unfortunately I have a respect for them. For the insane yeah. clown posse. I feel bad for that, but I have a respect for them. I don't like them, I don't hate them. I can respect really? them from afar. Just like yeah. uh Rod Kimball's dad in Hot Rod. I respect him. Do you see how yeah. I brought it back? Yeah that, that was the movie we're talking movie. about? Yeah, thank you. Really proud of that. Nice, nice segue. Yeah, it, it uh, was yeah. nice. Yeah, you he, know, he, I he, always. Speaking he was of music, kind of an asshole, but he wasn't too big of an asshole. Yeah, you know? and you can yeah. tell that on some level he did want Rod to beat him. You know, he was. You know, it's stupid, but he was sincere about it. Yeah. Oh, you know who else is in this movie that I'm in love with? Uh, Chris Parnell. I love Chris Parnell. He is just the most amazing man, and I love him. He's the owner of the AM radio station. 
Yes, okay. I am in love with him. I, I he is amazing. He's in space, but I don't know from where. He's been in everything. He was in 21 Jump Street. He was in Anchorman. He was... The the great thing about him is that he's done so much that my kids know him because he's yeah. the narrator of a of a cartoon on PBS. Uh huh. Okay. He's the narrator of the cartoon Word Girl. Uh huh. Okay. I, yeah, I keep looking at his face, man. Like I know him, but I can't place him from anywhere. He's been in everything, and he's absolutely amazing. I'm in love with him. <laughs> yeah. AM radio and color TVs. <laughs> AM radio. I was obsessed with AM radio for all of last year because an AM radio station opened in Oklahoma City and it was it was a 24-7 comedy. And they would play nothing but stand-up comedy. Yeah. And it was just the greatest radio station. I, I, it was just like the happiest year of my life. I I that, I would get it on my way to work, and then I would get it on my way back. I wouldn't get it at home, so I'd be excited to go to work because I'd turn on the radio station, and then they'd play Bill Hicks, and then Joan Rivers, and then uh, they would play uh, Richard Pryor and Red Fox, and they'd play Monty Python skits, and it was just the I fell in love with the station. It was just the greatest. Yeah. I, I I would go around telling people. I, I need to tell you about this AM radio station. It's the greatest radio station in the world. They, they closed down a couple of months ago, and I'm still broken up about it. Oh, uh, they're still online. They're they you can stream them on iHeartRadio app or some crap like that. But I'm still so upset that they are not around anymore. Yeah, yeah. Tom, oh, I would totally uh, that. Oh, it was great. It was great. They had these commercials where they would say, this is the only radio station that Bill Hicks would have approved of. <laughs> and they would play just, they would play whole just big chunks of him and George Carlin, and it was just absolutely amazing. Now, I fell in love with AM radio for a while, and I really, every time I would put on that station, I would think of uh, Chris Parnell's character. I would think of his voice. Do you love um, what about I, terminally ill stepfathers? <laughs> if you said one to, if you said yes to one or both of those things, you couldn't have picked a better day to tune in. <laughs> Who has a com- conveniently priced operation? <laughs> yeah. I always hated the music of Europe growing up. The band Europe. I thought that their yeah. music was cheesy and sentimental and crap. But yeah. their music is perfect for this movie. It is. Because Rod Kimball is cheesy and sentimental and kind of crap. And his their music just perfectly, perfectly fits this film. So now I'm listening to Europe a lot because of yeah. this film. The song Cherokee. It's a really cheesy song about Native American culture, which is which is a song that's sung by a group of white men. <laughs> and it plays while they're getting the, the ramp and everything set up for Rod for his big stunt at the end. And it plays for, for a while, and it's really just 80s cheese. Anyway, I'm obsessed with that song, and I play it constantly. Yeah. But he wants to be a stunt man, and he's really not very good at it. And no, he is he's not. starting off doing jumps with a moped. Yeah. There's a very how, Ed Wood quality about him. Man. Huh? Yeah. There's a very Ed Wood quality about that. Yeah. There's a lot of innocence about, about all the characters in that group. You know? Yeah. I absolutely loved when uh, they were outside of what the hamburger stand or whatever it was. They used to hang they, where they would hang out, and uh, yeah. all of a sudden over the speaker, the the order for Voltron is ready, <laughs> <laughs> and Bill Hader gets up because he gave his name as Voltron. 
Why are you calling yourself Voltron? <laughs> I don't know. Probably because it's super badass. <laughs> that was so beautifully stupid. I loved it. Because a couple of times in my life, I've gone into some place of some place where some, you, you have to register at the desk. I remember yeah. I was looking for gym memberships when I was younger, and you had to register at everybody's desk. So I would always sign the Poli and Solo. Nice. From, um, That's good. From the, from the man from Uncle. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Fuck you. <laughs> I usually I usually put the name Carlos Spicy Weenus. Yeah. Yeah. When I'm when I'm doing a short and I edit, I edit as Jesus Marimba. That's nice. So that is very nice. If you look at any of my short films at Undead Cow Films on YouTube, um, yes, you'll see you'll see Jesus Marimba as the editor. Very nice. And then if I'm stuck for somebody, because uh, I guess he's just kind of a go-to guy, uh, Billy mm-hmm. Bob Schwartz. What was that? Billy Bob Schwartz. That's good too. That's good too. Yeah. Like a like a like a Jewish redneck. Mm-hmm. Very nice. So whenever I need to come up with a credit and I don't have anybody, he gets stuck in there. So he's an everybody kind of guy. Very nice. Yeah. I I think that we should talk about what may very well be one of the most memorable scenes in this film, where Rod is upset, so he. He goes into a wooded glen and punch dances his rage. Yes. Which is a which is almost a perfect shot for shot recreation of the of the dancing out his rage in the warehouse scene from Footloose. <laughs> there's there's some video on YouTube which actually does a a, a shot by shot comparison. Of, yeah. The dance from Footloose and the dance from Hot Rod is pretty perfect. It's a pretty perfect, uh, except that Kevin Bacon's dancing in a warehouse and he's dancing in a, in a forest. But it's a pretty perfect, uh, recreation of that. So he's yeah. punch, punch dancing his rage. The scene before is when Rod finally learns that his dad is about to die. And I love the fact that he, Rod walks into the living room and everybody is uh kind of gathered around the dad and and crying yeah. and in tears and Rod's first reaction he says what is this is this some sort of interactive theater art piece <laughs> i love the fact that that is his first his first reaction to what he's seeing is that oh well this must obviously be some sort of interactive theater art piece there were some just great lines. Well, Voltron, I thought, was a great line. But the yeah. first time when we meet Frank, the, the, when he's in the basement with the medicine ball. Yeah. I want to find, I want to get the song that he's listening to. What? I want to get the song that he's listening to. Because I, I love that like song. Like old Western music. Yeah, like a, like a, like a, the, a song that like my grandfather would know and love just. Keep your hand on your gun. <laughs> the only just, man you can trust is a dead man. <laughs> Don't ever sneak up on a man who's been in a chemical fire. <laughs> that's a wonderful. That's a wonderful line. I, I love it oh, when awesome. right bef- right when Rod is about to go and fight his father. The the him and his brother have a like a ritual where they they sing to each other, and the first one is a. Ancestors protect me. May they protect you. I like that. <laughs> there are some amazing lines in this movie. Mm-hmm. Yes, completely and, awesome. And just and don't ever let your father eat pie. <laughs> I like that one too. <laughs> oh, and the the line where he's he's a uh, the. The dramatic tension near the end where he gives up being a stuntman and he says, you don't understand. I used to be legit. I used to be too legit. I used to be too legit to quit. I love that. 
I've adopted some of his uh some of his very nineteen eighties uh bits of dialogue. Like every once in a while I'll answer someone with a funky fresh or coolio <laughs> or I'll yeah. say goodbye by saying stay sweet. Yeah. Just a wonderful, wonderful movie. But he's <laughs> dancing, he's dancing in the woods. And then suddenly he falls, and he falls down a mountain. Mm -hmm. And there's a wonderful essay about this movie by Nathan Rabin. He wrote it for the Onion AV Club. And um, he he talks about how this scene is just a perfect, perfectly representative of the entire movie where he's falling down a mountain and it's really funny but then the scene drags on for so long that it's not funny anymore. Uh huh. But then it continues on for so long that it's funny again <laughs> because it's just a ridiculous amount of time that he's falling down this mountain. Uh -huh. Like it goes on for minutes that he's falling down this mountain. And it's just a perfect representation of everything that the movie stands for. It's like this film was destined to be a cult classic. That's why I brought it up last week, because I said that Reverend Steve was a cult classic and not a bestseller. Because for some reason, this movie was released in the beginning of August. It was released in the, you know, in during summer blockbuster times the film was it, it was a 25 million dollar budgeted film and the studio really did seem to think that this was going to be the next big comedy the next big thing and what it opened the, at the box the, office it opened at the box the office at, at number nine yeah hmm? oh, what did, what did you ask for what did they spend that money on? I mean, it does not. Look I don't know. Like maybe it's because, it, maybe it was because it was filmed in Canada and they just had to go to Canada and film everything. I don't know yeah, what they spent to, that money on. You go to Canada to get tax breaks to make things cheaper. Maybe they spent it on the big ramp at the end. Well, yeah. Maybe the buses. My daughter said because she's right here next to me. Yeah. Listening into the That's podcast. A lot of money. And loves yeah. the movie. My kids love this movie. Yeah. I I I better I better get off this thread or I'm gonna start breaking things down. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I, I do. I look at movies and I I will start budgeting them. You know. Yeah. It's like I, if, if we were gonna make that movie, what would it cost us for twenty boxes? You know. Yeah, it definitely wouldn't cost twenty five million dollars to make that movie. Yeah, things like that. So, but that that gets boring really quick. <laughs> um, one of the one of the things I love about the the making of feature that comes with the the DVD is that uh, every time that they interview Andy Samberg, he says the same thing to the cameraman. He says, uh, "Hey, hey, hey, Bill, or whatever his name is. Hey, Bill, why don't you lose the shirt?" And then the next time they interview him and he's talking, it's like, oh, yeah, this is a great scene. Uh, you look pretty good today, Bill. Why don't you, uh, next time I see you, why don't you lose the shirt? <laughs> and then they're filming some scene and he's getting dressed and he's like, hey, are you filming the documentary? Are you filming the behind the scenes? Why don't you lose the shirt? <laughs> and he just keeps asking him over and over again. So finally on the last day of filming, this poor pale, pasty, white nerd guy is just like, okay, fine, and he takes off his shirt, and everyone's cheering. Just, Yay! He lost, he, he finally lost the shirt! <laughs> it seems like this film would be a lot of fun. But Andy Sandberg was, before the movie came out, he did say, it's like, oh yeah, this film is not going to be a hit, and people are going to, like, this is going to get bad reviews. People are going to hate this film. So it seems as if he at least knew that he was creating something that wasn't destined to be the the big hit that at least the studio thought it was going to be. Yeah. 
But this is well, definitely maybe. a film that's destined to be like reborn in as a classic, but not as one. This is definitely something I would go and see at midnight. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> oh yeah! There are a lot of lines that you can toss out along with it. Oh yeah. My safe word will be whiskey. Whiskey. <laughs> whiskey! Whiskey! That whole segment was great. Yeah. Whiskey. I've been drinking whiskey all damn day! <laughs> this film is amazing. Everybody needs to see this film because it's just so wonderful and cute and funny. And it, it's just, it, it feels like an honest film, you know? Yes. It feels earnest. It feels like like a, like a film that, it, like, I can't imagine how Will Ferrell could have done this. No. Oh, no. I, and I like Will Ferrell. I, 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 I get to turn on Will Ferrell like a lot of the world has. Um, yeah. But no, this is, just, this is just not his movie. Yeah. Yeah, it it really needs a kind of a younger cast to it, for one. Yeah, but it's such a cute, cute, darling, adorable film. Yeah. I'm in love with this movie. Yeah, and and, and very sweet because you because you really felt for this kid who was trying so hard to be something. No matter how misguided he may have been for his reasons or anything like that, you know, uh, just as he, him chasing his dream. Yeah. You know, along with that thinking he's good at it. (laughs) Yeah. Like, no, you're really not. No. Some of those accident scenes were, like, pretty horrific. Yeah, like the the first one before the credits where he's just trying to jump the one bus or truck or whatever. Yeah, yeah. oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, just and looks absolutely hideous. And that's just your introduction to that character. Yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> I became obsessed. I became obsessed with a com- with a commercial. I was I was on YouTube and I, I don't remember what I was going to watch, but I was on YouTube, and you know one of those things where you have to watch a commercial before you see your video. And the commercial was was a computer commercial, and I think it was for Dell computers. I might be mistaken, but I became obsessed with this commercial because it, it it's a bunch of clips of random clips. But one of the clips that they use right in the beginning of the commercial is Richardson, Richardson? the Asian guy, the the Asian guy they, that wants oh, yeah, to be on yeah, the crew. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The one who is dancing. Yeah, it, and the clip that, and I, I just became obsessed with this commercial because right at the beginning of this commercial for computers, they show a scene from Hot Rod of Richardson shoving his, doing his weird cross dance, and I just became obsessed with the idea that like you are a major corporation, and you make computers, and you decided to lead your commercial with a scene from Hot Rod. How did this happen? And I just, I just fell in love with this commercial. I'm like, oh, oh my God, Emma, you need to see this commercial. It's like, why are you showing me a commercial? Just watch. And he's like, okay, Dad. Wait, was that Richardson? Yes, it was Richardson. Isn't that amazing? I love Richardson. <laughs> and I am glad that there was a small nod to Super Dave. Super Dave Osborne. Super. Super Dave. Wow, I remember Super Dave. And it was just an offhanded comment that, uh, oh, I forgot his name now, Arnett made. Where he, yeah. just, he just called Rod that out of the blue. Just something like, yeah, Super Dave, or something like that. And it was just like, okay. <laughs> they, I they never... Due diligence. I never got over the fact 
that Super Dave was in Ocean's 12. Was he in Ocean's 12? I have not followed the Ocean's movies. Ocean's 11 is a really, really wonderful movie. It's, it's, it's really good, and it's, it's well written, and, it, you know, the, the group of actors that they got for it is, is really amazing. I have, it, I it, have one really big problem with that movie, or, or hmm. that series of movies. Huh. Julia Roberts' face. Oh, God. You, no. It, the good thing about Ocean's Eleven is that you, Julia Roberts isn't in it a lot. She's, she's hardly in it, and, and th- that's the best part of the movie is that she's hardly in it. Mm-hmm. Ocean's Eleven was so successful that they quickly went into Ocean's Twelve, and Ocean's Twelve is just a horrible, horrible movie. But so like Ocean's Twelve, The Quest for Peace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I, I, but the, they get arrested, and then some, like, um, CIA people come and take them from the prison, and is oh, well, this is CIA business, and it turns out that they're not CIA, they're um, um, one of the characters' mother and father, and it, it just happens to be Super Dave, and I'm like, I never would have thought that I'd see the day where Brad Pitt and George Clooney are doing a scene with Super Dave. <laughs> Never would have thought of that. Like, there's a there's a kids' movie that my kids watch a lot, and it's an animated movie called Megamind, and yeah. Will Ferrell is a blue alien. It's a really cute movie, but unfortunately it came out the exact same summer as Despicable Me. Uh-huh. So one summer there were two kids' movies, animated movies about bad supervillains and Despicable Me won but Megamind is a really cute movie but the the stars of that movie is it really Will Ferrell as the bad guy and his sidekick played by David Cross from Mr. Show with Bob and David yeah but the the bizarre thing is, is that Brad Pitt plays the superhero in the movie and he gets second billing so the amazing thing about the movie Megamind is it's the one movie that will ever exist where David Cross gets bigger billing than Brad Pitt. <laughs> it's like, well, this will never happen again. Yeah, no. Probably also probably also for Tina Fey and Will Ferrell, too. Starring Will Ferrell, and oh yeah, Brad Pitt as well. <laughs> yeah. Brad Pitt yeah, was actually... Know, Brad Pitt was actually... Think what about was that? this. Think about this, though. Super Dave was already somebody when George Clooney was still making Return of the Killer Tomatoes. Oh, God. So yeah, now, that's a good point. When he's when he's making a movie with Super Dave, he's probably like, oh, shit, yeah? He's probably, like, totally into it. I'm going to yeah. make Super Dave? <laughs> Think about that. God. Strange paradoxes. Yeah, that's a bit circles odd. Within circles. Wheels within wheels. Inception. I don't even know what that shit means. <laughs> My. I saw the movie Inception. It's a Christopher Nolan movie which means that it's needlessly complicated. Yeah. But the the people in the film can go into dreams, and then, oh, at the end, we need to go into a dream within a dream. Oh, wait, we need to go deeper. We need to go into a dream within a dream within a dream. Wait a second, yeah. where are we at now? We're at a dream within a dream within a dream within a dream? So anytime yeah. something that... So anytime, anytime something within something happens, I just assume that it's an inception. Yeah. Like the other day it was cold, so my daughter wore pants underneath her pants. And I'm like, you have pants in pants? Pantsception. <laughs> uh, I really need to revisit it. I liked it. I, I have it on my DVD shelf as a blind buy. Um, I liked it. I wasn't in love with it. 
Yeah. I found yeah. it really interesting, but there's only so long I could watch that fan going all over the bridge. You know? Yeah. Like, okay, I, I got it. Okay, I understand. Yeah. Christopher Nolan is... in the footage. Like, Christopher Nolan's Batman movies, they were all right, but I'm... I'm just worried that now that he's done those Batman movies and those Batman movies were wildly successful, that that's just all that DC Comics is going to be, that 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 he's just grittifying everything, that everything has to be gritty now, that everything has to yeah, be dark. We're, and... we're going to have to see. I don't know. I, I've heard rumors that the, the Batman Superman movie is going to lighten up a bit. I hope it does because the everything doesn't have to be gritty. Comic book movies don't have to be all serious and dark and brooding. And I really did not like that last Batman film. I really thought that that was like a huge misstep. I I haven't seen it. I you know I I haven't heard good things about it, and I don't care enough to find out on my own. You know. Yeah, yeah. It's I just do not see that film to be as good as everyone in the world apparently thinks that it is. It's it's not that not that special. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Like but Hot Rod. One Hot, Hot Rod is Rod. amazing. Hot what Rod is that? amazing. The the second one, Dark Knight? Yes. Yeah. The Heath Ledger one. Yeah, that was Yeah, that was a that was a Heath Ledger that was just amazing. Yeah, but that's kind of the thing, too. I mean, you know, we can cut all the bits of Heath Ledger together and it would still be a good movie, you know? Yeah. The rest of the, you know, the whole Batman stuff, it just kind of took away from the Joker parts. And also, if you look back at it, a lot of time in the entire beginning scene, all of the the criminals that you see and the bank manager and everything – they're written very bad. All of the bad yeah. guys in the, in the the opening scene is beautiful, but they're the dialogue is just, "Hey, what's you guys doing?" Mm-hmm. Maybe that's why he's called the Joker. <laughs> I'm a bad guy. Hey, what's you guys doing? I'm talking like this because I'm a criminal. You guys don't know respect. Like, really horrible. Horrible. Yeah. It's an amazing scene, and it's visually stunning, and the way that it's scripted out is amazing, but all of the bad guys in that film are just written down to the most basic levels of cheese, you know? Yeah. Really, I just really bad. Uh, I just rewatched Batman Returns last night. Oh, I with the circus it. gang. I enjoyed it a lot more than I did when it first came out. So I guess, I, I yeah. guess for me, it just had a mellow out for like 30 years. <laughs> I just saw Michael before. Keaton in the movie Birdman. I went to go see Birdman? that in the theater. Birdman. Birdman. It's a new movie, and it just came out, and uh, Michael Keaton plays a washed-up actor who, uh, in the 90s, played in... Stretch. <laughs> yeah, he wow. played in a series of superhero movies where he played a character called Birdman. But now he's trying to resurrect his career by doing a play on Broadway, and he's haunted by this Birdman character that he used to play but literally because he hears the voice of Birdman and Birdman follows him around. And he also thinks that he has superpowers and can fly. It's the most amazing movie, and it's all edited and shot so that it looks like one continuous take. Although the film happens... Yeah, although the film happens within about a six-month period in time, the entire film is shot to look like it all is one big, massive take. It's really amazing. It, it's an amazing, beautiful film. It made me motion sick. 
because of yeah. the, the bizarre steady cam way that they did the whole concept that the film is in one take. But it was a motion sickness where I was kind of impressed. Yeah. It's not like a motion sickness like I'm watching the Transformers movie and everything's going around. It was a motion sickness of, wow, I, I'm, this is amazing. And I can't, it was like a, like an amazing ride. But you know who I was blown away with in this film? I, 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 I don't think I'll ever be able to say this sentence again, but that Dallas Anakis was brilliant. Really? Yeah, he okay. plays Michael, he plays Michael Keaton's manager slash lawyer slash best friend who's trying to keep everything together, who's directing yeah. the play, and he really has some amazing scenes. He's, he's like the co-star of the film, and it's not all laughs. I was impressed. It, this might be the, like the first and only movie where I can honestly say that Zach Galifianakis was acting. Huh. Yeah, I, I'm blown away by it. It's, this is definitely like a film that's going to be up for a number of Oscars, and usually I don't uh, find myself seeing those films because right. I don't give a crap. But this is a, a, an amazing movie. Amazing movie. Huh. And one of the big reasons why it was amazing was because, God, I just remember those Batman movies. And, and Michael Keaton, and he was just amazing in that, that role. Well, I'm going to have to check it out now that it's got your recommendation, because just hearing that plot, I, I would I would be wanting to miss it, you know, because it's like, oh, my God, really? Michael Keaton, you're playing yourself, basically, right? Yeah, you know, pretty much. But with, with your recommendation, I'm going to have to give that one a look. It's amazing because he did these superhero movies, but and they were very, very successful, but he couldn't really find acting after that. So here he is trying to do this play on Broadway to resurrect his career, and he has the TV on, and the TV is on the news, and the news is saying, Robert Downey Jr. just signed up for $10 million to be in Iron Man 4, and he's just all pissed off because he feels that he was the like the grandfather of all of these superhero movies with his yeah. Birdman film. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But Michael Keaton, I I was never impressed with him as an actor. I thought he made a good Batman. I didn't think he made a great Batman. I thought he was good, you know. But at the time, like we didn't have Batman. It was him or Adam West. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. But other than that, like you see, I'm not even a fan of Beetlejuice either. I just don't like Michael Keaton. You know. Yeah. So. I never, I, I I liked Beetlejuice when I was a kid. I was obsessed with Beetlejuice, and I loved that movie. But I don't know when the last time was I saw it or cared about it. You know? Yeah. I'm. I mean, I liked Mr. Mom when I was growing up. Michael Keaton was in Mr. Mom. I loved that movie. <laughs> well, I loved Mr. Rod. Mom. Huh? Hot Rod, there was one very big disappointment in Hot Rod. What was that? The cute redhead well, never got naked. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, okay. There's that. There, there, that is there a bit of a... That. There was a bit... That is a bit of a disappointment, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But my my heart broke for him in the movie theater. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know? I felt bad for him. Yeah, like like his whole life was crushed there. Yeah. You and know, Richard Finn was... trying to stand up for him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was sad. Very sad. There were but it is a wonderful little, movie. Yeah, there were quite a few little, like, poignant moments like that. Yeah. You know? His yeah. awkwardness around, around the girl, which <laughs> I can hardly... You're pretty. Know, you know? Yeah, <laughs> you're pretty. <laughs> what did you say? Uh, I said you're shitty. Goodbye. 
That was like so sixth grade, you know? Yeah. When you couldn't admit that you liked the girl, so you had to make fun of her. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a wonderful movie. Everybody should go and see it. And did you you said it's on Netflix? It is on Netflix, yes. It's still on Netflix. Mm-hmm. That's that's where I watched it. Uh huh. Yeah, so there's no excuse. Yeah. Yeah, no no, no excuse don't have at all. And you really do need to watch it. It's 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 really hysterical, and it, it, the, it, it's a lot of jokes that I really haven't heard before. You know, it's yeah. a, it's a very it's really its own thing. Yeah, yeah. There's not a lot that can that can, that it can be compared to. Yeah. No, the closest would be Napoleon Dynamite for me, and and again, I didn't like that movie at all. Yeah, but it is definitely its own its own individual entity. Yes, <laughs> much <Mustache>. that. <laughs> you know, I have a hormone problem. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, All great men have mustaches. <laughs> Frank, that's the dad's name. All All great men have mustaches, Frank. Yes. But most of them can grow them. <laughs> you know I have a hormone disorder. You know I have a hormone condition. <laughs> Funny, funny. Fresh. It's a wonderful movie. It is a wonderful movie. It is on Netflix, so go watch it. Definitely. Go watch it. Yay. Uh, what are we thinking about next week? Um, I, 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 I have was... a suggestion. Go ahead. What's your suggestion? Um, a, a movie I think you really need to see. Um, a movie I totally want to remake and actually do okay. start working on the script. And it is in my Netflix. Uh, it, it is on on YouTube. Creation of the Humanoids. I'm sorry, you cut off there. What did you say? Creation of the Humanoids. That's what I thought you said. Okay. I it I have is, not I have not seen this movie. It is. Um, a early 60s sci-fi movie um, uh, 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 about a society split pretty much between humans and, and basically android kind of characters. You know, they're, okay. they're humanoid, but they're blue. Um, it, it is claimed to have been Andy Warhol's favorite movie, uh, but I do not hold that against it because I think Andy Warhol's kind of a dick. But <laughs> it, it, it's hard to describe. You would have to watch it and see what you get out of it. Because it's one of those weird movies where I get the feeling that everybody who looks at it is going to see their own thing. Okay. All right. And don't get me wrong. It's bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But it's got something. It's it's got things to it. So. Well, I've never seen it, and I I I will give it a try. Yeah, if you go to my YouTube channel, it's in the bad movie list, the B cool. movie list. So, all right, find it there. Then I will watch it, and that shall be our movie for next week. Excellent. How is the blog going? It, it it exists. For a, a couple of weeks ago, I was I was posting, you know, a, three or four times a week, and now I'm I'm posting maybe once a week, kind of a little update. I don't have the internet at the moment, but I should be getting the internet 
soon, so you yeah. should still check on my blog, reverendsteve.blogspot.com. You should check it out because there's still a whole bunch of awesome stuff on there. So you should check that out. You should find my YouTube page because I'm I'm always posting a bunch of strange stuff on there. I posted uh, just today a very strange video of me at a, a stoplight. It's a five-second video, but it, I cannot stop laughing about it. <laughs> cool. It's five seconds. It's five tiny little seconds, but literally I cannot stop laughing. It's just the greatest little video in the history of the world. I love it. <laughs> Good. So uh, search Reverend Steve or Reverend Steve G on YouTube, and you should be able to find me. Yay. Cool, cool. What are you listed as? Reverend Steve G. I think so. I'm seeing you. Yeah. Yeah. That's me. Is that the AT&T sign fail? Yes, yes. Okay. Right. AT&T sign fail. The, the AT&T logo is dead, and the and T part at the end are also dead. The only part of the sign that's working is the AT part, and it keeps flashing over and over again. So it just keeps yelling at, at everyone. <laughs> cool. So it's just a sign. And at night, it just keeps saying at, 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 over and over again. And I had to capture it on video. I spent the whole, like, two and a half minutes at that light just reading the sign over and over again because it just keeps flashing on and off. So just at, 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 I'm going to get a video of this, at, 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 at. And I got a five-second video of it, and it's just my favorite thing in the world right now. Cool. Very cool. What else would you like the people to know? Um, nothing else I can think of. If you melt dry ice, you can't swim without getting wet. You can? You cannot. You cannot? You cannot. Yeah, mm. I proved that. So I can't okay. think of anything else I want the people to know. Oh, uh, here's something. Rats are physically incapable of vomiting. That is correct. Yeah, I want the people to know that. I I, I have had rats. I've I've owned pet rats. Oh yeah, I love those little animals. Oh yeah, they're cool little animals. I I they're was there. over at a I was over at a friend's house recently, and they had some rats in a cage, and I was a little bit scared. And I just say, oh, hey, look, pet rat. And then before I could say otherwise, they said, oh, yeah, they're really cute. Here, let me get them out so you can play with them. <laughs> so I have played with pet rats, and now I'm okay yeah. with it because they are pretty cute. They're, they're personality-wise, they're like halfway between a dog and a cat. Yeah. I can see yeah. how that would be pretty awesome. They're they're not as aloof and snotty as a cat is. <laughs> Yeah. 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 But uh everybody, please, for the love of God, because I put in so much work, start watching Bob's Dirty Shorts. Okay? Yes. It's the it most amazing little thing. To a minute. Yeah. And it's daily. You know, it's kind of like a daily Dilbert or something like that. Remember when you used to open up the paper and go straight to Far Side? Same thing. Same thing. And it's a wonderful thing to freak out your friends on Facebook. Yes. 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 You want to really freak out your Facebook friends, just share that. Instead of a Rickroll, roll them with Bob's Dirty Shorts. They're absolutely amazing. Everyone really should be watching that. (laughs) I I have heard of a couple of people, like, they watch it, but they won't share it because they don't want anybody to know they watched it. Oh, no, you have to. You have to share it. You have to let everyone know how bizarre this thing is. It's amazing. I can understand how people would feel that way, but no, no, you got to go all out with this. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. And it's in a playlist, so you can just start at the beginning, put it on, sit back for a while. They're all short, so you can turn it off at any time you like, and you'll, you'll... 
you will be horrified and you will laugh and you will be amazed and you will be puzzled depending on what's going on in any particular episode. Yeah, everybody needs to watch this. And that is on YouTube at Undead Cow Films. Not Undead Cow Studios, our regular name, but Undead Cow Film on YouTube. Awesome. And please come and like the Pope on Film webpage on Facebook. So just do a search for Pope on Film, and that will bring you right there. Come and like us. We're going to be having contests, and that's where we're going to wind up announcing stuff. So awesome. come along. Win a DVD. Um, yes. Also, follow us on Twitter, at Pope on mm-hmm. Film, and you can tweet with us. Tweet back and forth. I Tweeting makes me kind of nervous. Yeah. And we're on Stitcher. I, I, I don't know who I'm tweeting. or, or I, I don't know if they wash their hands when they tweet me. You know, things like that. That's a good uh, point. We are on Stitcher. We are on YouTube. We are on iTunes. You can find us in the iTunes store. That's probably the easiest way. But while you're watching Bob's 30 Shorts, you can throw on the Pope on Film, because we're there as well. Um, And if you have anything to say to us, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, um, if one of us is the father of your child, uh, no. For that, there's a different email address. But for anything else, Pope at UndeadCow.com. Awesome. Yeah, we're all connected. Yeah. Um, For the the whole, if you think we're the father of one of your child, the email address for that is randy at irs.gov. Good. Good. That's good. That's good for people to know. Okay. You know, just in case, you know, it could come up. Yeah. Anything else before we wind this up? Nothing I can think of. All right. In that case, stay tuned. Next week, we're going to be doing the creation of the humanoids. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is... Reverend Steve of the Church of Edward. Thanks for listening. And this has been the Pope on Film. Have a great day now. Bye.